right, I am set up here this morning with a bunch of stencils, and there is going to be a commonality in what I'm doing with, I'm not going to use every one of them because I don't think we have time for that, but um, there will be a commonality in this and any of the stencils that I have out here would be excellent choices for what I'm going to show you. Have any of you heard the quote, color gets all the credit, value does all the work? It's a great quote. I, um, I don't know who said it. It's all over the internet and I was thinking that John Muir had said it and I can't I can't really find documentation of who actually originally said it and I don't know that it matters but the point is is that we as artists as painters as mixed media people we get all whipped up about the color and color gets all the credit in our work but value is really what's behind the scenes making it happen. Color gets all the credit, value does all the work. So think about that for a second. And I was preaching this loud and clear in Ireland. Um, I believe I also, I've been talking about it for years. And here's the reason why, is because I was awful at this when I first started out. I mean awful. I got very excited about the color, the paint, because I consider myself a painter first, and um, I got all excited about the paint, and I would use so much of it, so many colors, and then it would look great to me, and I thought the colors were amazing, and the colors would sing, or whatever, but if you would have photographed the art in black and white, you would have realized that there were like no color changes or no value changes whatsoever. And it, it was hard for me to move myself to the place where I created art that had kind of, ah, I'm just going to do it with my hands, kind of, lovely flowing value changes that didn't feel contrived because you know what I did in those initial days I'd make the art and then I got to the point where I realized oh wow I don't have any value changes so I'd go back in and I'd add blacks and whites and try to put some value changes in after the fact and certainly that was better than none but I like to get to the point where my work flows and progresses in such a way that the value changes are created more naturally along, along, the, the, along the creation path. I'm not my, I need to use my words and I feel it in my bones, you know? It's like that artist thing, I just feel it. So these days, what I try to do is come up with ways to teach in my classes, ways that you can develop blood darks and lights in the beginning stages so then you work forward with color and you develop nice value changes yes more organic amy that's exactly what i'm trying to say so i have created some examples here of some things that um have value changes in them and i think that this one particularly, this one I made yesterday at home, and I went ahead. This is step one, and this was step two. So, all right, I'm going to stop being so mysterious. Now I'll just show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I did this with thin paper. Thin paper that would tolerate some water. So this one I did with, you can see this is a little bit... Um, little bit wrinkled up from the paper from the water but boy not much you could glue this down in a flash it'd be no problem super thin paper though this one also super thin paper so this one was done with mineral paper which I'm going to use today this one was done with marker paper yeah yeah Michaela nice nice 
um, marker paper. You should check out the stencils by Jane Dunaworth, one of our designers. She does all of um, her stencils are all the Notan principle, and they're so cool. They're really cool. I think you might enjoy them, Michaela. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, anyway, this one's marker paper, which is also a super thin paper. We're going to use mineral paper today, and I'll show you my idea here. I'm going to take one sheet of mineral paper out, and all right, I have a whole list of stencils that this technique works with. This is one that I did for this one. This was the stencil I used for the background of this one. This is the stencil I used for the background of this one. Patty's going to post a whole list of these stencils, maybe towards the end, and you could um, do a screenshot or something and, um, and save it. So if you're looking for stencils like this, you'd know what to use. Okay, Diane Reeves started me on this thinking, all right? Oh, is that the list, Patty, that, that link you just put up? Awesome. <clears throat> so Diane Reeves started me on this. She has these new stencils that are too cool, and I love them so, 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 so much. So I think we're going to start with one of those. Maybe this one. I like this stencil. These are fabulous, interesting stencils. There's three 9x12s. All right, I got a hot mess on my table here. Too many stencils. Is that ever something anyone said ever? No, I think not. Okay, she's starting the list. All right, so here are some of the stencils that are great for this technique. And I'm going to use one of these big Diane Reeves, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to take rubbings to the next level, everybody rubbings uber rubbings uber rubbings all right so first lay the stencil down flat lay the mineral paper on top i chose to do this with um black because i wanted um i wanted black and white okay to start with and um so i pulled out these were the things and i'm going to show you how all three work all right i pulled out my stabilo and I pulled out a Karen Dash, uh, a Neocolor 2, and I pulled out this Lyra Water Soluble Graphite because I wanted black and white. And we're going to do rubbings of a stencil. So here I'm going to try to keep it in certain areas. So I'm not going to do the whole thing because it would be boring as heck, but I want you to get an idea of what this looks like. All right, so this is the Stabilo that I'm doing now. I think I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit and you guys can see this better. Okay. All right. That's the Stabilo. This is the Karen Dash. And this mineral paper, yeah, it's this weird paper, Jenny. It's so, so flipping cool, though. I love it. It's great for gel prints and just for lots of things. The only thing is you can't tear it. You have to cut it with scissors. It's made from rocks, truly. And here's the graphite. Don't you love that sound of a good rubbing? So to do the rubbing... I try not to make it too complicated. Just use the side of the of the the pencil. All right. So here are three. So Stabilo, Karen Dash, and Lyra. I have a cat named Lyra, in case you were wondering. <laughs> so, all right, so you get those three done. And then you get on the side here some white gesso. 
and I'm gonna I have the thickest white gesso known to man it's insanely thick I think I've left the lid off of it way too long and um, it's crazy thick but I, I kind of like it that way it's like I almost I swear maybe there's this part of me that leaves the lid off on purpose just because I like how it looks you know and then here this is soft gel gloss so for this other one you could use any um, you could use matte medium you could use a gloss just some kind of a medium that will dry clear and that's the main thing yes alcohol inks really well on the mineral paper I mean gorgeous well so all right so I'll show you what we're going to do here. And then you can see which one of these you might like better. Okay. So what I want to do is get this to more of a true black and white um, result. So I've got my gel medium here. So I can just, this is almost, this is going to fix it just kind of like it is. Okay. So that, you put the clear over, and if you go gently, it's not going to really move the color around too much. But it doesn't make it as white as I want. All three of these things, Stabilo, Caran Dash, and Lyra, these are all water-soluble um, pencils, okay? So this one, it's a little creamier, but look how it just goes totally black. That's not good for our purposes. That's not really what I want. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to pull some of that off. And when I have a big space like that, I can because on the mineral paper, it's so forgiving. It's just this crazy, crazy paper. Look how that comes right up, right? And that's pretty cool. So when I've done that, then I can go back in with a brush and put the white on top of it right and you gotta love that you can do that or you can take a smaller brush like this one and like let's say you want some white but you want to blend it out to get it that middle gray right you can just blend it out like that the white not bad right not bad not bad So there's so many options. So, you know, the thing about using the gel is when you really just want to fix it down there, right? You want to keep it in its exactly where it is and you don't want it to move anywhere. Now, again, with the Caran Dash, it's so creamy. It kind of moves around. It almost responds like the gel is a water or something. almost blends out with it, which that's okay. That may or may not be what you want. Let's take a look at the, um, the graphite. It's a little bit different, right, because it's that gray. First of all, let's try to take the baby wipe and see if we can clean some of this off. This is also going to result in a less, you know, so-called stencil look because, um, you know, it's going to move the edges around and make them look more organic and more kind of hand-painted, which I think is kind of cool as well. You can even go back then and, you know, kind of, I like to go back then and sort of draw back a little stencil-like version right in there, almost like you're recreating the stencil with your own drawing tool, right? So I really feel like, I don't know, I think this has got some legs. I, I honestly do, because when I played with it, I had just a lot of fun. I felt like, I felt like the stencil was giving me kind of a little outline but then it would allow me to expand in my own direction right so and I also felt that there were reasons to use all these different 
mark making tools too. I liked all of them, you know, for different reasons. I kind of liked the Stabilo because you can you can really kind of tease out that color, the black with the white, and get some gorgeous grays in here. And I really like that a lot. You know, you could also, like, let's try it. Well, I'm glad you like it, Kristen. Everybody's been so quiet. I was like, rah, rah, what am I doing here? Does everybody hate this? Am I the only one that thinks this is cool? You know, watered that down a little bit and then put some gel medium in it and almost removed some of it more. So here's one, a whole one, where I started working on it. And here I had painted up some of these areas. Here's, you know what? I just thought of this other thing. I wonder if, let's see, what stencil was that that I used? Oh gosh, like I can ever find the stencil I used. I think I used this one here. Okay for this piece here <laughs> everybody's watching you're also quiet i know it's like it's so unusual right so let's imagine you put this stencil back on okay so now you're blocking out your lines okay and i'm gonna grab a sponge now i didn't think of this yesterday or whatever day I was planning this. I guess that was Sunday. No, it was Saturday. Saturday was the day I thought it was Sunday all day long. Seriously. I seriously thought it was friggin' Sunday. Okay, so now this would be a very interesting study to do. So I'm going to leave some of these grays and then I'm going to stencil some just to give you, I think it'd be a nice idea to take a look at, you know, how this pops up. I think it's really going to pop the, um, the whites, but then leaving the grays, it's going to give that option. And then, you know, your blacks or your darks are underneath there anyway, and you can certainly touch those up. Now, here's the only thing to remember is that your lines that you've created, okay, look at that, how that popped that center section. That's really nice. And see, that's the advantage of a stencil versus a rubber stamp or some other template. I mean, you can replace it. You can see what you're doing, you know. Now, we use this stencil. Well, this is actually a mask, and that's why these work, because when you use a mask underneath it, that's when you can take the rubbing and you get this linear part. And then the holes are where you put the paint, obviously, which is what makes it a stencil. So I don't know. That's kind of cool. I wish I would have thought of that the other day. Um, I think I'm going to keep playing with this after we go off the air. But OK, so let's take a look at some of these that I did. So this one, I had the stencil underneath there. And I did the first step that I just showed you guys where uh, this was the Karen Dash because I, that ended up being kind of my favorite. I don't know why, but I just really liked it. And I sort of set the Karen Dash marks with the gel medium because I really didn't want them to continue moving after, you know, after I did my rubbing. So I set those with gel medium just using the same small brush. I just kind of dabbed some gel medium on them first. Then I went back and I worked some grays and so forth. And then I used my set of core watercolors. And this is that set. It's a travel set. I've had these for years. I travel everywhere with them. And look how they hold up. Well, if I cleaned the case, you could really see how they hold up. But... <laughs> I mean, I use them a lot, right? So this is all watercolor on mineral paper. And I love the way the watercolor, it just, it created some very interesting areas there. And I blotted it a few times with paper towel. I just thought it was pretty flippin' cool. So then when I made this one, here's the stencil I used for this one. I used this corner up here. This is L775. This is um, 
you know, I have this cut into fours at home. So I use that part for my lines. And then I just went crazy on it. I just literally used it as a starting point and I added collage elements. I added linear elements that I hand drew and hand painted. I added some of that PET tape. I don't know if Seth's still on here, but he sells that stuff. Oh my God, I am in love with that stuff. Okay, so I just literally acted like the rubbing was a starting place for a piece of work. And, oh, right, 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 okay. And I just went crazy just painting. So this is just collage and acrylic paint, paper artsy. So, I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential here. I think it's a really great way to use the stencil as a guide, for one. I think it's a great way to develop value changes before you start your work because look at these, the value changes can't be denied and that is going to strengthen your work down the road. That's going to set you apart from all the others who are out there just playing with color and maybe don't know that part about the value changes. You know what I mean? I, um, I just think that that's what's going to make you a more successful artist overall. So I hope you give this a try. These are very, very fun stencils. I mean, there's so many things you could do. The other thing, oh my God, I could keep going about this forever and ever, but okay, so let's say you use this stencil as the rubbing stencil. So you take the rubbing, then let's say you go back in and you add some whites or you use it with your brush or whatever. Then let's say you want collage in this square right here. Guess what? You got a tracing pattern right there. Trace a hunk of collage. Now, I would also advise you mess it up a little bit because you don't want to be too tidy. I think that's the other thing I see in work that for me, I don't know. I think if it can stay more organic, your edges are, you know, just a little rough and so forth. It makes the work stronger. You notice on this one, I went back in with a pencil in my non-dominant hand and I just went around and made some marks. So play, play, play. Start with strong values and go from there. The stencils can be such a way for you to achieve great success. Messy grungy, me too, Michaela. Love it. I love my messy grungy. I love seeing the marks. Everybody's individual marks. Nobody can ever take your mark away from you. So do it. Go make some art and have fun today. I'm so happy you were all here with me this morning. I'll be here again next Monday and same time, same place. So I'll see you later. Everybody have a great week.